The outer part of the announcements, you can set that aside for now. Inside is the service leaflet and the scripture readings. Everything you need to follow the service is in the service leaflet, except for the hymns, and we are using uh, two hymnals today, the 1982 hymnal, which we just used, and the red and black, lift every voice and sing hymnal, indicated by the letter L. Those hymnals are the uh, tracks in front of you or under your chair. Also, just to note, the uh, last hymn is printed incorrectly in the bulletin. The correct number for the last hymn is on the pin board. It's 398. So don't get confused when we get to the last hymn. Yeah. Uh, everyone is welcome to receive uh, communion here and instructions on how to receive the sacrament. Our belief that we will do that part of the service. And during the sequence hymn, during the scripture readings, the children will go out to the chapel for story time and come back after the sermon is over. And now, before we continue, Let's just plant our feet and get deeply grounded and take a deep breath. And know ourselves to be in the presence of God who is in us and all around us. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our first reading is from 2 Samuel. David the king ordered Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave orders to all the commanders concerning Absalom. So the army went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was fought in the forest of Ephraim. The men of Israel were defeated there by the servants of David, and the slaughter there was great on that day, 20,000 men. The battle spread over the face of all the country, and the forest claimed more victims that day than the sword. Absalom happened to meet the servants of David. Absalom was riding on his mule, and the mule went under the thick branches of a great oak. His head caught fast in the oak, and he was left hanging between heaven and earth, while the mule that was under him went on. And ten young men, Joab's armor-bearers, surrounded Absalom and struck him and killed him. Then the Cushite came, and the Cushite said, Good tidings for my lord the king, for the Lord has vindicated you this day, delivering you from the power of all who rose up against you. The king said to the Cushite, Is it well with the young man Absalom? The Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up to do you harm be like that young man. The king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I had died instead of you, O Absalom, my son, my son. 
The word of the Lord. Our psalm appointed today is Psalm 130 in your insert. Let us pray this psalm together. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his words is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. Putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord.
didn't complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God, he has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of the Lord. Gracious God, grant us always to seek the truth, come whence it may, cost what it will. Amen. O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I had died instead of you, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Out of the Iron Age, 3,000 years old, this cry of David's rings as true and as haunting today as it did on the day David learned of Absalom's death. Oh, my son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom, would I had died instead of you, oh, Absalom, my son, my son. The sound of a parent weeping for a lost child for all the ways the relationship has failed, all the ways they were never able to put it back together again, and then it was too late, too late. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. We are at the end of the many weeks that we have spent hearing the story of David. From the day he was brought in from tending the sheep to be claimed by God as Israel's future king, through his love of Jonathan, son of King Saul, through his life in Saul's court, and then his rebellion against Saul, and finally his victory and coronation as king, even as his beloved Jonathan lay in death. Through his many wives and children, through his rape of Bathsheba, the murder of her husband Uriah, the stillborn son of that first union through his realization that he had sinned in this whole affair and then his deep repentance. And now here, late in his life, at the end of a tumultuous reign, in the rebellion of his son Absalom against him. The story of David is always perplexing to me because scripture tells us that God loved David best. And our view of David has been colored by that interpretation. So we have sanitized his story and prettied up his image. David the shepherd boy. David defeating Goliath. David the author of Psalms. David the king of a united nation. Judah and Israel together at last. David who had a covenant with God that his line would never fade. David the ancestor of Jesus of Nazareth. But if you actually read the Bible, you discover that David is a flawed character. He is a rebel, a rapist, a murderer, an indifferent parent, and sometimes not even a very good king of Israel. 
His story is steeped in blood and violence. He is a fallible, violent, jealous, loving, doubting, talented, faithful, passionate, and broken man. He is a human being. And today we hear his voice. We hear David wail down the centuries as fresh as the wails of any parent today who loses a child to suicide or gun violence or overdoses or cancer or car accidents. Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I had died instead of you. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. This relationship between David and Absalom had gotten so brutally broken over the years. Absalom had been a golden boy, handsome, with long hair so thick that when he cut it once a year, the locks weighed 300 pounds. No, three pounds, but it sounds good to say 300. He rode around in a chariot with 50 servants marching before him. He was a rock star. People loved him. David loved him. But David's family was always dysfunctional. Too many wives, too many sons, too many relationships. Absalom and his sister Tamar were the chi children of one wife. Amnon, the eldest son, was the child of another wife. Amnon raped Tamar, his half-sister, but David did nothing about it because he also loved Amnon. So Absalom avenged his sister by murdering his half-brother, Amnon. The people say the Bible is boring. So, of course, Absalom had to flee and live in exile until David was coaxed to bring him home. But Absalom eventually raised a rebellion against his father, drove David out of Jerusalem, and then publicly raped ten of David's concubines on a rooftop so everyone could see his conquest made real. David had only a small army. Most of the military had joined with Absalom, but when they set out to face Absalom's army, that's where our story picks up today. And as they go out to do battle after everything, after every single horrible thing Absalom has done, David still tells his generals, deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. David still loves his son. Well, of course, the story doesn't end well. Of course, Joab and, the, one of, and all of his generals make sure that Absalom can never live to rebel again. And of course, all the natural consequences of this whole sad story play out just as horrible natural consequences do. And so we end up with the cry of a grieving father, broken and bereft. So we can take a step back from this story and ask why. Why, if God loved David, didn't God spare him all this drama and all this suffering? Or why, if David loved God, didn't David behave better? Why didn't he bring life into all these situations instead of death? Or why did God love David at all, flawed and violent person that he was? Or why did David bother to love God if God did not rescue him from the consequences of his stormy human life? But instead of taking that step back, let's take a step in. Because even after 3,000 years have passed, this is still a human story. It is still our story. It is our story because we are a lot like David. Very few people get to go through a whole human life without wailing at God. Very few people live uneventful lives of contentment and peace where everything turns out like a Hallmark Channel movie at the end. Most of us live human lives. We are embodied in fragile human forms set into human families. No life is perfect. Each life has its troubles. All of us wield our God-given free will like broadswords slashing at one another. I hear David's cry and my heart aches. 
It aches because I am a parent. It aches because I have watched my adult children fall and get up, screw up and try once more over and over again. I hear David's cry and my heart aches because I am a child. It aches because I watched my parents battle and hurt each other and work to fix it and disappoint each other and still love each other through all of it. And then my father died of cancer and my mother wailed with unimaginable grief and took to her own bed until she died too. I hear David's cry and my heart aches because I am a pastor. Because I look out at this gathering and I know many of you have grieved will grieve, are grieving, will struggle, are struggling. I walk with people through cancer, through sobriety and relapse, through hospice care, through death and loss, through the countless dysfunctions of family life, through the hurt and heartbreak of being loving, fallible people. I hear David's cry and my heart aches because our stories are David's story. Because human beings love and human beings give their hearts away and human beings screw up and hurt each other and human life is fragile and it ends in death. It always ends in death. Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I had died instead of you. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Frederick Buechner wrote a beautiful comment about this cry of David's. He wrote, David meant it, of course. If he could have done the boys dying for him, he would have done it. If he could have paid the price for the boys' betrayal of him, he would have paid it. If he could have given his own life to make the boy alive again, he would have given it. But even a king can't do things like that. As later history was to prove, it takes a God. It takes a God. What kind of God? When we are wailing like David, we ask all those why questions of God. Why did this happen? Why didn't you fix it? Why should I believe in you? Why should I trust you? But that's not the God we have, a fix-it God. We are not action figures or Barbies that God plays with. We are free beings, and God leaves us free. But God loves us just like God loves David. God loves us enough to become one of us, a person just like me, just like you. God loves us enough to send a son, God's own self, who also lives in a fragile, mortal human body, who also wails, why, at God, as he hangs on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But then God answers that cry and all the cries of grief and despair that echo down the ages. God does what we cannot do. God shatters the power that all this brokenness holds over us, the power that even death holds over us. In Christ, in the resurrection, God extends the trajectory of love and deliverance and healing past the point of human death. It is true, some things cannot be fixed on this earth or in this life. Some things are just lost to us. But in the resurrection, everything is restored. The promise of resurrection is that we can trust absolutely that as the old hymn goes, earth has no sorrows that heaven cannot heal. Everything will be healed, has been healed, is now healed. Maybe we can't see it yet, but God's promise is good. All the wailing from David down to this day will be answered. All the grieving from David down to this day will turn 
to joy. Amen. Let us pray. Creating God, cast our eyes on the miracles lighting our way, the warm summer sun, the shelter and shade of trees, sunsets and starry nights, waters that renew and bless, and all that grows and blossoms and bears fruit. With awe and wonder, Uphold us in prayer, spiritual practice, and devotion to inner awareness that wisdom may increase in each of us. Bring us to be gentle with ourselves, forgiving of others, and caring of a world that is taking a quantum leap out of night and confusion into new horizons of light and hope. As we move through a world that is not in service to love, help us to be merciful. May our tenderness be a benediction to the frightened and suffering. Transform the fear in us that spreads suspicion and separation across this land. Help us to see the sacredness of relationship and to work to restore our communities. Guide us in this and every election to see beyond the rhetoric, to discern and vote for candidates who will govern from the heart for the good of all beings. We pray for the well-being of Howard, Paula, Don, Tamara, Catherine, Ted, Dorothy, Marty, 
Emily, Barbara, Matthew, Folu, Dixie Lee, Kevin, Karen, Gordon, Rosemary, and Jean. We pray for those who are sick, hungry, and those who feel alone, for children who are separated from family or in danger, for prisoners and captives around the world, and for the concerns of your people gathered here. Lord, your people cry out. We ask, O God, your continued blessings upon our parish, upon the diocesan bishop search, upon the wider church, and upon the people of this sweet earth. Give peace and rest to all the departed. Good morning. I'm Glenn Staszewski, and I'm the vestry person of the day. <laughs> the vestry is the governing board of the church, um, so if you have any questions about All Saints, uh, please feel free to ask me. Um, here are some important announcements for today. Um, if you're visiting with us, please fill out a visitor card. Um, these are found in the pew racks in front of you. Um, place it in the offering plate as it goes by, and we'll send you some information about the church. Um, this is the only offering that we ask of our guests today, that you let us say thank you for, for joining us. Um, right after the service, join us for coffee and fellowship. Um, it looks like uh, in, the, in the back of the church uh, where the coffee and, and drinks and refreshments are, are set up. 
Um, there's four uh, special announcements for today. Um, first, the blessing of the backpacks. Um, we will gather to give thanks for the summer um, and mourn for the beginning of a new school year um, on Monday, August 20th from 6 to 8 p.m. with a bonfire and blessing of the backpacks at the group campsite at Fenner Nature Center. Um, all are welcome. Dinner and s'mores will be provided. Please bring your backpack uh, to be blessed. RSVP to Becky Beauregard. Um, her email is in the bulletin. Um, second, one book, one community. My Beloved World, a memoir by Associate Justice Sonia Sotomayor of the United States Supreme Court. Um, inspired by One Book, One Community, the Interfaith Clergy Association of, Gla of Greater Lansing invites you to an evening of storytelling as local judges share personal accounts of their lives, their work, and their faith. Um, please join us on Wednesday, August 22nd at Congregation Shari Zedek from 7 to 8 p.m. with refreshments following. Um, third, uh, there's a sanctuary update. Um, thank you to all of you who have contributed to the sanctuary fund. Because of your generosity, more than $1,400 has been deposited in that fund to be used for the immigration family currently in crisis. Your support is a crucial part of All Saints Sanctuary efforts. If you would like to, be, to volunteer to be part of the care team, which will provide assistance if and when we have someone in sanctuary, please contact either Marilyn Fox Wade or Paulette Johnston. Um, their emails are also in the bulletin. Um, finally, books for the year of the Bible. The Path, A Journey Through the Bible, will be available at Coffee Hour for a discounted price of $16 beginning August 19th. The two supplemental books recommended by Pastor Kit, What is the Bible by Rob Bell and Biblical Literacy by Timothy Beale, will soon be available on the reading group table at Schuler Books at a 20% discount. Um, contact Carol Baker. Her email is also in the bulletin. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. 
covenant of marriage, that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and your church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their homes may be havens of blessing and peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, how many years? 24. 24. 49. 49. <laughs>
and gave breath to human kind. One recited holy, one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout.
you are able to join me to work our Let us go. 